Sharks have inhibited the oceans for 400 million years. They existed 200 million years before the first dinosaurs roamed the planet. We currently kill 150 million sharks every year through finning, longlining, and net fishing. Many scientists fear that in as little as 10 years from now, many species of sharks will become extinct. For the sake of our planet, we must learn that sharks are not man-eaters. Only when we accept sharks as what they are, predators that play an important role in maintaining the ecological balance of our oceans, will we act to protect these magnificent prehistoric creatures. Ten years from now, will this ten-year-old boy still be able to dive with his friends, the sharks? Luke lives in South Africa's Sadwana Bay, where there are reefs that are frequented by pregnant sand tiger sharks. Luke is excitedly anticipating his first dive with his favorite animals. I don't think people have to be afraid of sharks because they're very peaceful animals. He's from an early age been involved in, in water and much prefers being underwater than above. Uh, we get reports back from his teachers that any available time or any available paper in the books is filled with shark drawings. Once he has finished all the preparations, the biggest adventure of Luke's life can begin. Luke diving with the sharks will hopefully have a positive influence on many divers around the world. This morning was a particularly different morning. He woke me up earlier than normal to tell me that he's been up and he's already packed his fins and mask and snorkel and weight belt onto the boat. His enthusiasm really impressed me. Which way? I was very excited to dive with the ragged two sharks. I wanted to go and see what their world was like. Just a few hundred meters offshore is the Quarter Mile Reef, which lies in a shallow region about 10 to 12 meters deep. Just a few days earlier, the first sand tiger sharks of the season were spotted here. The conditions for Luke's first dive with sharks are ideal. The water is clear and calm without any waves or current. Hand in hand with his mother, Luke dives into this fascinating world. Luke knows that sand tiger sharks sometimes lose a tooth. That's no problem for the shark, since within a few days, it is replaced by one of the teeth behind it. Throughout their entire lives, sharks produce new replacement teeth, which means they never need a dentist or dentures. Luke makes a surprising discovery. just as a guitar shark is swimming by. It was very special because I was the first person ever to find that tooth and touch it. It was just great. Another prehistoric creature, this time a hawksbill turtle, is curious about Luke and accompanies him on part of his dive. Distracted by the new impressions he is gaining, Luke almost doesn't notice that the first shark has suddenly appeared from nowhere. And where there is one shark, there are sure to be more.
In spite of their frightening set of teeth, sand tiger sharks are considered to pose no danger for human beings. They primarily eat small fish, squid, and shellfish. Luke's interest in the sharks seems to be mutual. The sand tiger shark comes closer and closer and swims placidly past Luke to check him out. Sand tiger sharks normally do not eat while they are pregnant. When they are expecting, their hormones inhibit them from feeding. The sharks are so interested in observing Luke that they nearly run into one another. More and more curious sand tiger sharks appear and circle calmly around Luke. Much too quickly, it's time for Luke to bid farewell to his newfound friends. I don't think it's dangerous at all, letting Luke dive with the sharks. We understand the animals and that knowledge that we've acquired, we've transferred to Luke. And I think this is what inspires him and gives him the confidence to, to actually get down there and, and, and associate with them. Got six of them, Luke. Yeah. This is the best day I've ever had. It's better than my birthday. Better than your birthday? Because you don't get sharks coming to your party. <laughs> we need people like Luke, who from a young age begin to understand these animals and the value of the animals in the whole marine environment. It's awesome, man. Well done. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <You're dead. Well> done. <laughs> Shark spotter, shark spotter. This is Delta Tanker Delta. Do you copy me? Okay, we're leaving Jessup Point now and we're slowly going to make our way up to your location. Whale sharks are one of the species that really stand out and they make an annual migration past our coastline at Sedwana Bay. They're quite easy to spot, most of its time close to the surface. Whale sharks are the gentle giants of the sea. Most people are afraid of sharks. Even some divers are afraid of sharks. I want to show people interacting with sharks so the general public can see that it's possible. So it's possible that you are in the water with a large shark and you just enjoy it. It's possible to have a positive interaction with sharks. There are more than 500 species of sharks in the world's oceans. Half of these sharks never grow to more than one meter in length. Whale sharks, on the other hand, are the biggest fish on the planet. Whereas the smallest shark is only 20 centimeters long, whale sharks can grow up to an impressive 18 meters. Whale sharks are totally harmless to humans. They feed primarily on plankton, and also eat small fish and crabs. There I was face to face with the biggest fish in the world, the whale shark. And I'm just one meter 50. So I was looking at the viewfinder, filming that shark, and this, that fish would never end. It, it's a never ending fish because it's so huge. And I was doing my very best to keep swimming beside it so I could film it. And this fish would easily swim away. And after a while, it would turn, come back and check me out, as if investigating me. I was really amazed. What was that fish doing? It really came back to check me out. Whale sharks usually pay no attention to divers or snorkelers. 
on the few occasions when they encounter human beings, they usually continue on their way, apparently uninterested. So it's all the more remarkable to observe how this whale shark behaves towards Andrea. Something seems to have awakened his curiosity. The first time he passes by her, he slows down, making it possible for Andrea to easily keep up with him. Then something incredible happens. He swims back to Andrea again and again, and even opens his huge mouth. Gently, as though by accident, the shark brushes against Andrea's camera. This initial contact seems to encourage him to circle ever closer around the diver. The whale shark swims directly towards Andrea. He seems to have anticipated and even desired the encounter. She reaches out and touches his huge snout in order to avoid colliding with him. After a while, the whale shark starts behaving in a funny way. It came straight to me with the mouth open. <laughs> Gee, that is a mouth, huh? A huge mouth, and this mouth straight in my direction, coming to me, open, as if it was feeding. And I was kind of, what should I do? It was so close that after a while I had to push it away to keep it there because I could not film anymore. That guy was really on top of me. It was a privilege to be in the water beside such a huge animal. Gansbai, a small town at the southern tip of South Africa. It is the white shark capital of the world. What we are trying to do is to change the public opinion about white sharks. Through um, generations, um, people have grown up to believe that white sharks are like jaws. And by our free diving and everything, we can show that it's not like that. The film crew meets up with Michael to discuss their project. We cannot change the world, but we can try to give our puzzle into the whole picture and to create something new, some, some new image on the shark, and maybe this helps to protect these animals and save a few lives of the great white sharks. Andrea, Ralph, and Michael believe that they can dispel the common image of sharks as killers by filming harmonious interactions with the most feared shark species of them all. When humans realize that sharks are not monsters, they will finally be willing to protect these animals before it's too late. Approximately four kilometers off the coast lies Dyer's Island and Geyser Rock, separated by a narrow strait called Shark Alley. Geyser Rock is home to more than 55,000 seals that go there to mate, give birth, and raise their young. For white sharks, they are an irresistible opportunity for a quick and easy meal. Our sharks move into the area. They stay a, a period of time and move out of the area. Shark Alley is um, basically like a white shark McDonald's. The sharks come in around this island, especially the channel, and try and take out these seals. I like the seals. They uh, are part of the ecosystem. They're the clowns of the ocean. Normally, large predators avoid the thick forest of kelp. They are probably afraid of getting tangled up in this seemingly impenetrable mesh of stems and leaves. Great white sharks are no exception. Their favorite prey, the seals, are left alone here. 
but for the playful marine acrobats, the kelp is a veritable amusement park. Here they can swim and romp without a care. If you come and dive in the proximity of the island, uh, most probably the sharks could mis mis mistake you for a seal and react very violently towards you. A real seal paradise, if it weren't for those pesky sharks. Great white sharks often prowl the edges of the kelp forest and launch surprise attacks against incautious seals. These are just beautiful cuddling animals, and unfortunately, the sharks eat them, but especially here, they work like nature police. So all this, the animals that are not strong enough to survive, they get eaten by them first. So I think it's, it sounds cruel, but it, that's nature. White sharks do not only feed on living prey, they also feed on carrion. The highly nutritious fat of a dead whale, for example, is a welcome addition to their diet. Sharks help to keep the oceans clean and healthy by consuming sick, injured, dying, and dead animals. If you want to go snorkeling with great whites, you first have to attract them with the appropriate bait and chum. And you must be very patient. Before you go into the water, wet your face. There's a natural reaction in your body. If you wet your face, your heartbeat, everything drops down. So just wet your face, sit on a platform, and relax totally. The animals read your body language. Always keep eye contact with the animals. If they got visual contact with you, you have to have visual contact with them. If you in the water, never run away from the animals. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you run away from the animals, luck like pulling the trigger. Um, they will come in. All their food runs away from you. So if I swim away, they think I have food and they might they will come me. in just okay, to I'll, demobilize I'll, you. That's maybe difficult not to do it. <laughs> <Yeah. which part? laughs> All these animals, they're all different. So if you go out there and you see one animal, you must appreciate how special that is to see that animal and what he's doing naturally, because the next one will do something in the same environment and do it totally different. That's a nice player. She'll come back now. Now she's going to think about what we did. Come back. Although Michael's playful interaction with the sharks appears dangerous, it is vital to gauge the animal's character and mood before Michael and Ralph enter the water. If a shark is too aggressive, they can't risk going into the water. But if a shark is ready to interact, then the real play can begin. That's a nice shark. The boat crew observes the water through their special sunglasses. Thanks to the polarized lenses, they can look past the reflections on the water's surface and call out to Michael and Ralph whenever new sharks are approaching. Especially when the sharks become restless or when they approach the divers unseen or from behind. Um, if you get into water, you have to take which animals are afraid, which animals are not afraid, which animals are too pushy. And the animals read you. You're new in the environment. If you are too pushy, they're going to react on it. We become part of the shark's environment, not the shark's part of our environment. After a moment of meditation, it's time. Armed only with an unloaded spear gun, Michael dives in. When I saw Michael going in the water the first time with the great one, my heart was almost stopping to beat. Um, and then when he said, hey, come in, it's time, I forgot to breathe, I forgot everything, you know. I grabbed my camera, maybe there are still the fingerprints in the handle of the camera, so I pressed it that hard. 
Um, but then when we, when we were in the water, it was totally a relaxed atmosphere. And when I saw Michael moving, the sharks moving, how they're coming in, checking us, going, come, um, I got more and more relaxed with the situation. Some people were thinking and even saying that Michael is a stupid idiot and that he is probably going to kill himself. But actually, he knows exactly what he's doing. He observed the animals for so many years, and he really knows what the animals are doing. He knows the behavior, and he's able to read what they are doing. From your heartbeat to your muscle movements, everything must be totally relaxed. And then the animals around you relaxes, and it gives you a very positive outcome. You just pull your knees up, you know, make yourself a bit smaller. You'll see the animal c will come closer and closer and investigate closer and closer. He's playing with them. It works perfectly together in a special harmony which they created. And sometimes I was so fascinated that I forgot to, to press the trigger to get the pictures. By recording spectacular shark interactions, Michael and Ralph hope to prove that the image of sharks as dangerous creatures is wrong, and that it is indeed possible to swim peacefully and in perfect harmony with the most feared marine predator. It was like the shark was saying, hey, Mike, do you want to get a right? I give you a right. Come on, just hold on. It was so unrealistic, you know, this is the beast, the killer, and he's coming and saying, you want to get it right? I take you, and he was holding the fin, and both of them swimming away. It was, yeah, amazing. Sharks only allow people to touch them when they feel very safe. It requires infinite patience and extensive knowledge of the animal's behavior before intimate contact like this is possible. They are not there just to harm uh, people, and people shouldn't be there just to harm them. Finally, at the end of the day, the right shark appears. After he is really sure that the snorkelers pose no threat to him, he starts getting confident enough to interact with them. Close encounters of a very intense kind. Perfect conditions for Michael. Now he can dare to do what no one has ever attempted before with a white shark. Both of us knew this is the shark, this is the animal. We can go in and we can, we can try what we were talking about before. was amazing what I saw and what Michael did. I don't know what I expected before, but I, what happened actually I did not expect. It was just, the shark was opening gently its mouth and going like this, and it was just a gentle pushing away with the nose, and the shark was going and, and like, yeah, it's incredible. The following day, the conditions are still perfect. The team wants to take their interactions with white sharks one step further. Right. 
We've broken down the scuba equipment as much as possible. We only got one second stage. This other second stage seems to hook on the reef because we're working on the reef. And we've done away with the um, BC. We just got a backpack that gives you a lot more maneuverability. When the first shark circles the boat, Michael again needs to figure out whether or not it's the right shark to play with. There's a big difference between snorkeling and scuba diving with white sharks. On the bottom, you don't have the watchful eyes of the boat crew who can warn the divers when a shark is approaching unseen. And communication among the divers is also very limited on the ocean floor. Closer to the surface, the sharks seem to feel much more vulnerable than at the bottom. Down here, they approach the divers with considerably more self-confidence. These animals are so beautiful and elegant that I don't have words to say how much. It's just, yeah, just amazing animals. To persuade the sharks to come closer, the team spreads out a bit more chum. When a second white shark suddenly appears on the scene, the situation grows more tense. Now the divers have to keep their eyes on two sharks at the same time and be careful not to be mistaken for a snack. If you want to free dive with white sharks, I think the most important thing that you need to um, know and acquire is how to keep the situation neutral. When a shark comes too close, it's usually enough to blow out some bubbles or to make some noise. Sharks are predators of the ocean. Um, if you go into the water and you become part of the environment, you are also a predator. Everything works exactly like another predator in the ocean would do. And the other predators in the ocean does and will react on you and come and see what is going on and start interacting with you in their language. The guys were all the time keeping an eye on me because I was the only woman in the team and because I'm small. But on this very dive, we had these two sharks in the water and the guys were busy. So that was my chance because I wanted a close encounter, not shark and camera, not me and the shark. And I saw this white shark coming in my direction. And I thought, that's it, my chance. Hold your breath, keep still, lift the camera a little bit, and let the shark come. And that's what happened. This guy came straight to the camera, passed by the camera. When it left, I saw the second shark coming to my frame. It was amazing. Great experience. People should actually with all this enthusiasm and all this fascination of the, the pictures, they should not forget that these are wild animals and these are the apex predator in the ocean, so they can be dangerous also. You must not forget, they don't have hands. So, you know, there's all this smell of food in the water, smell of bait in the water, you are swimming with them, and what chances do they have to check you out without having hands? They have to bump you with your nose, or they have to take a well-intentioned test bite on your camera. After they are convinced that the divers are not food, and also that they do not pose a threat, the sharks continue looking for the source of that irresistible smell caused by the chum. If the animal's coming towards you, stand your ground. If you have to knock the animal with a camera, do it like you mean. You have to be dominant, but just dominant enough that the animal would not react and try and take you out. You can get a remarkable direct response from the animals. 
The sharks sense every single movement made by the divers and react immediately. When coming in such close contact with sharks, divers must be aware and in control of their every movement. Even a harmless balancing motion with an arm could possibly trigger an attack. Calm movements and smooth, uniform breathing are extremely important for positive interactions between humans and sharks. Only if the animals feel secure enough are such intense encounters possible. She was coming out of me, the big one, and I swam up, took up with this back fin, and I was riding and the spear gun somehow. Like she's going, just touch the ending. Oh. I but found you got something? such a nice gap for me to fit in. I had a, a rock on the left, a rock on the right, so I could swell, <laughs> so I could pull it and push, and I could find I a nice place there. Right. They were coming like this. Uh, yeah, yeah. I thought I'd take a picture. So it must be this one. There. This sure. one. Was this, this one part. here. Another one, right here. Umkomas, a small town on the Indian Ocean south of Durban. Not far from its beaches lies the Aliwal Shoal, known for its abundance of fish, magnificent coral reefs, and for its large population of tiger sharks. Andrea and Ralf have come here to meet up with a tiger shark expert. Together, they want to continue their work to disprove the public's view of the dreaded tiger sharks. Basically, my job is to be uh, a shark guard and a backup diver for the film crews. Andrea, Rolf, and Steve share a vision. They believe that if they can show the world that it is indeed possible to have positive and peaceful interactions with these ultimate predators, then the public will realize that the bad reputation of sharks is unfounded. Hopefully, this could be the first step toward the global conservation of these animals before it's too late. Like all big predators, tiger sharks are very shy at first. To attract them, the team puts chum and bait in the water. A drum filled with oily, irresistibly tasty sardines surely will do the job. Before the film crew gets to work, Steve explains how they should behave in the water. Okay, Andrea and Ralph, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to jump in the water first. Okay, I'll let the bait stem go with all the bait on. They might take some sort of interest in you, especially, specifically with the camera. They have um, no way of feeling what it is. They can smell the bait in the water. So they might come up and just give you a little test bite. Don't worry too much. If, if, if you're getting a bit nervous, just take your hand and push them gently away. Within moments, the first hungry jaws have picked up the irresistible scent. The design of these elegant predators is one of the most successful in nature. The way they glide through the water seems effortless. Tiger sharks are the second most dangerous species, but in the last 425 years, only 84 unprovoked attacks have been registered worldwide. Only 28 have been fatal. In the same period, there have been only 224 unprovoked attacks by white sharks registered worldwide, of which only 63 have been fatal. For each human attack by a shark, a staggering 10 million sharks are killed by humans. And the first time I jumped in the water, obviously there was that, that the adrenaline was going, without a doubt. I mean, the heart rate was up, the, the apprehension was there. I didn't know anything about the sharks in those days. Uh, uh, what I knew, uh, I'd seen in the movies, like Jaws, and, and to me, they just said, shark's bad, shark's bite, not good. But what I discovered is the apprehension was there from the shark side as well, which was, to me was surprising, because I thought, these creatures are supposed to just devour me, or, or devour the fish, and they, you know, they should get into a frenzy with all this bait and water, but they didn't. I love them. You know, tiger sharks, to me, 
Uh, when you jump in the water, you see how graceful they are and how purposeful they are on their movement. And you see that they are there on this planet for a specific purpose. And there's no need to fear them. I think you guys should... Oh, she's lovely. I was quite excited when I jumped in to dive for the tiger sharks for the first time. I mean, they are the apex predators in the ocean and they have this bad reputation. I mean, I knew it's wrong, this bad reputation, but uh, you never know. The first time is always very excited. When the film crew enters the water, the tiger sharks react very cautiously and timidly at first, keeping their distance from the divers. They do not know whether these bubbling creatures are competitors for their food or whether they pose a threat. Only a healthy, injury-free predator can continue to hunt successfully and avoid becoming the hunted. The tempting smell of the bait prevents these tiger sharks from instantly disappearing. Keeping a safe distance, they cautiously circle the divers to inspect them with all their senses. I've never seen them get overly aggressive. I've never seen this frantic agitation, you know, so in that sense, I haven't had the need to be too worried about that they're gonna come flying out of nowhere like a white shark and, and tear me to pieces, you know, and I've tried to explain that they've gotta be aware that these are wild animals and they won't necessarily bite, but they can. So you have to be awake. When a shark gets a bit too interested in the camera, Steve gently pushes him away. As time passes, the sharks become accustomed to the presence of the divers. They seem convinced that the divers do not pose a threat to them, and they behave now less timidly. I think all sharks are curious. You must remember, sharks don't go to school, so they don't sit there and learn this is a human being, those bubbles they're blowing, they're scuba divers. They don't know any of this, so you just got to try and put yourself in their shoes. They see us for the first time, there we are, this funny thing with a tin on our back with bubbles coming out of our head. I mean, think about it, it's crazy. So from a shark's point of view, they are cautious because obviously they don't know what we are. So they will slowly circle us to investigate and they might get closer as they get braver when they, when they deem us not a threat. You know, and I find that with all sharks. The sharks move closer and closer. Once again, encounters of a very close and intense kind. It took time and it was definitely a learning curve. Obviously, the, when you break down that barrier with more time and time and time you spend with them in the water, they learn to trust you, so to speak. What was once considered to be impossible is actually taking place. Steve's favorite tiger shark, Casey, no longer seems to mind being touched. Again and again, she approaches him and even allows him a ride on her fin. I would hold my breath and swim as smooth as possible towards them because I wanted to get close. I wanted to look into their eyes. I wanted to see just the stripes on their bodies on my viewfinder. Most people still don't know that in reality, tiger sharks are shy creatures worthy of our protection. In fact, they face a serious threat of extinction. With the right amount of experience, and using a careful approach that takes their behavior into account, it is indeed possible for humans to interact with one of the most feared predators. These peaceful encounters prove, even to the most skeptical observer, that the perception of tiger sharks as being notorious killers can no longer be considered accurate. So it had to be a, a gradual process of me introducing myself to her and then swimming with her and then she would take me.
and eventually they just accept me as another creature in the oceans. And with that acceptance, it's the same as if I was just a very large remora or something like that. It was absolutely amazing. Who's going to believe that I sat on the back of a tiger shark? But it, it, it's just to show that it can be done. You know, I'm not saying that you should all rush out now and jump on the back of a tiger shark. It's, it's, it's not something I recommend you do at home, you know, it, but it was just me testing the boundaries. I don't do it too often. I don't like to handle the wild animal too often because it breaks that, that, that barrier of respect. But I mean, it, what an experience. What, I, I, it just, it, it leaves me with a nice warm feeling inside. <laughs> it's hard to explain and uh, uh, it was great. It was just great. Eh? Slowly and without any signs of aggression, Casey approaches Steve and lets him touch her nose. Again and again, she returns to Steve. In the process, it becomes clear that Casey just wants to interact with Steve. Of course, no one should attempt to copy this kind of interaction with sharks. It could be dangerous, even for the most experienced divers. Imagine, this is one of the most feared sharks, and this shark swims straight up to Steve and, and plays with him like a dog. I mean, he, he even lets him touch his nose and, and opens, gently opens the mouth and, and without trying to bite Steve. I mean, it was like, it was amazing. Yeah, you're getting pretty smart, eh? All right, you got some oil in here, see? Woo! Yes, he's taking it around. Pass me some bite. I want to try something different, eh? Excellent. Casey obviously needs time to assess the new circumstances. But when she is convinced that there is no threat, she makes her first approach and gently takes the bait fish out of Steve's hand without any sign of aggression or feeding frenzy. Casey keeps on returning to Steve to pick up her fishy treat. Steve is only able to interact with Casey in this way because she allows him to do so. Who would have ever expected that such harmonious interactions are possible with one of the most feared predators of the oceans? This was the first time that Steve tried to hand feed his favorite shark, Casey. And yeah, it was, was unbelievable what we saw. I mean, uh, the shark came straight to, to Steve uh, and he gently took the bait from his hand without trying to bite him, without any aggression, without any feeding frenzy. And it was just like, wow, I, I don't have the words to, to describe what I saw. Ralph and Andrea are convinced that documenting this behavior will help change the shark's bad reputation. And that more and more people will now realize that sharks are just normal animals. Animals that desperately need our protection. <laughs> Woo! Oh, something else. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, that was interesting. Absolutely amazing. You see how she eventually getting bolder and bolder. Hey, she let me feed her. I couldn't believe it. Slowly, right. she got braver and braver, and then eventually, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Hey? How many sharks down there? Oh, oh it wasn't some volume of sharks. Casey was there. And uh, the way she took that bait so gently from my hands, it was absolutely amazing. Adrenaline's going, eh? it's going to keep me going for a while. <laughs> Tiger sharks have an extremely diverse diet. Unlike great white sharks, they will feed on almost any sea creature, including rays, other sharks, and large reef fish. 
Their menu also includes dolphins and seals, whale carcasses and other carry-on, and seabirds. And they are one of the few top predators that also feed on turtles. Without any sign of uncontrolled gluttony, they calmly use their razor-sharp serrated teeth to cut pieces of flesh out of a huge, dead leatherback turtle. I noticed there wasn't any sort of feeding frenzy as I expected. You know, they didn't get out of hand. In fact, the smaller sharks held back. They waited until a bigger shark came along to do the job of opening a turtle or starting the feeding process. At first, there are just a few sharks circling the leatherback turtle, weighing approximately 150 kilograms. They are so busy with their prey, they hardly take notice of the film crew's presence. But soon, more and more tiger sharks arrive on the scene. None of them want to miss out on this delicacy. And there is a tremendous change in their usually shy behavior. When they approach the divers now, they do so without the slightest trace of caution. And with 10 sharks, it becomes difficult, especially for the cameraman. I mean, they're probably watching one or two sharks, and then you just remember then there's eight sharks around you. So now my job is to watch the other eight. The electronic signals coming off the cameras will obviously draw the sharks in. When the sharks approach from the front, it's not a problem. In most cases, they turn away slowly, apparently uninterested. As the diver in charge of safety, Steve now has his hands full. It's his job to protect the film crew from unwelcome surprises. I don't believe, what's this shark doing? Suddenly, this shark beat his flashlight. And I was curious to see how this story would finish because I was sure Half would not give away his flashlight and his flashlight was totally inside that shark's mouth. As Andrea said, I would never have given away my flesh and of course I would have followed the shark wherever he was swimming to, to get my camera back. <laughs> I was just worried that he could damage the flesh or that he could cut the cable off with his teeth but he took the flesh so gently in his mouth that there was no damage on the flesh and not even the cable was cut off, so everything was perfect, everything was fine. Because their masks severely limit their field of vision, as well as the lens of the camera, it's impossible for the film crew to observe all the sharks at the same time. Surprises are unavoidable. The approaches the sharks are making toward the divers are not attacks. Instead, they demonstrate the animal's curiosity about these strange creatures. It's therefore only natural that they occasionally want to inspect the divers or their cameras a little more closely. And since they have no hands, all they can do is bump up against them with their snouts or take a friendly nibble. I mean, the, the excitement was such that when Ella came into Rolf's arm, obviously he had his head in the camera, which is typical of cameramen. Um, he didn't see it. The, his right arm was up here, and Ella turned her head. And I know the motion now, because as she starts to lift her nose like that, and the, and the eyes go, then we're in trouble. That's definitely the biting mode. And she tried that with Rolf, and I just managed to cut off. But all it took was a gentle nudge. Yeah, when something. you touched me, I got like, woo, right. And I thought, no, they got you. But then I looked around, it was Steve, and I said, oh. <laughs> Thanks. All sharks are just normal predators, nothing more and nothing less. They are definitely no monsters or beasts that swim in the ocean just to kill people. All our positive interactions were initiated by the sharks themselves. We only could interact with them because they wanted to interact with us. And we could only touch them because they allowed us to touch them. Most people hear shark, they run away. Some people hear shark. Where is it? They jump in the water. 
For these people that run away, I tell them, learn about these animals. Sharks play a very important role to keep the balance of the marine ecosystem. They are there for a reason. They are the top predators. They clean the oceans, they keep it, it's health. Maybe in 10 years, there are no sharks there anymore. Maybe in 10 years, Luke cannot dive with his favorite fish in the water. And that's a shame. That's a big problem. Any creature that allows such peaceful and harmonic interactions cannot be held for a monster anymore. The irrational fear that we have of sharks prevents us from getting to know them and also explains our lack of interest in protecting them. We must overcome our fears to really understand these prehistoric predators. If we change our attitude toward sharks, we will be able to appreciate the importance of these elegant creatures. Hi, I'm Pat Johnson. And I'm Regina Frazier. And we call ourselves Grannies on Safari. We had an idea for a television show. The show would be about connections we made with people around the world. We are best friends and have been for more than 30 years. As grannies, we still have a lot of exploring to do. So join us. We're off to discover the new South Africa. It's a cultural mosaic, people, art, and history. Coming up next, Hi, I'm Mark Wahlberg in Madison, Wisconsin. It's got to be one of the biggest Plains Indian dolls I have ever seen. I never would have expected that. Oh! You like that? Yes! You're kidding! No! Do you still think it's ugly? 